Hi friends, this is SLU, and I'm Bob Berman to bring you the news of an exciting, exploding star that's going on right now. And here at SLU, we bring you live images of this. And this is a work in progress. This is a star that's brightening up day by day. It was only discovered yesterday. And already it's brightened up uh, by a factor of six since its initial discovery. Here it is. This is a live view from the SLU telescopes in the Canary Islands. We're going to come back to this in just a moment. But first I want to tell you about the telescope that's bringing you this uh, as we're speaking. The SLU telescopes are located on a mountaintop up at uh, 6,000 feet high above all the crud and pollution and sandstorms that blow off of Africa because it's off the coast of Africa. It's the site of world-class observatories, a lot of observatories from different facilities and countries. And one of them is right now, this is SLU, right now looking at this NOVA. It's daytime in the United States still, but during the uh, program right now, it is already night there. So we're staring at a part of the sky, Delphinus, the dolphin. Some of you may be into astronomy and know that little kite-like asterism. It's a tiny constellation near the Great Summer Triangle. And in that constellation, a discovery was made yesterday of a star that is blowing up. Now we'll talk in a little bit about the difference between a nova and a supernova because there is, by chance, a supernova going off in a nearby galaxy as well. But the nova is what's holding our attention because who knows where it's going to go. Let me show you. Here's the picture of the nova. This is a live image right now from the Canary Islands. That's the bright object that we see in the field of view. And it's brightening up while we're speaking. I mean, we're talking about hour by hour. Well, what's going on? We'll discuss this in a moment. Look at that. This is a live image of this nova. It's magnitude. Those of you who know what this means, it's magnitude 5.2. Now, the limit for the naked eye is magnitude 6 if you're under dark skies away from city lights. So this has already reached the point where it can be easily seen. Specifically, it's as bright as the faintest star of the Little Dipper. The Little Dipper has four stars that make up its bowl. Many of you can already identify it near the Big Dipper out these nights. And of those four stars in the bowl, the dimmest of the four matches the light of this nova, whose name is, uh, well, it's always named for the constellation. So this is Delphini 2013. We don't even have to say number one, number two, number three, because this is the only star that's blowing up in that constellation this year. So that's sufficient. There are letters and numbers, strings of letters and numbers we could say also designate it. But hey, if you tell your friends at a party tomorrow, hey, I just saw Nova Delphini 2013, or if you don't want to use the Latin genitive form, Delphinus. Who, who knows the names of these? You know, it, just astronomy geeks mostly because of the 88 constellations. Most people know Orion and Taurus and the, the zodiac constellations like Leo. So when you get to the fainter ones like Delphini, the dolphin jumping out of the celestial seas, not a lot of people know it. Nonetheless, I'll tell you a little later on in the show how to find this for yourself if you're under clear skies tonight and you're not living in the middle of a city. Although, by tomorrow night or the night after, we're going to keep tracking this at SLU, uh, perhaps it has reached a brightness that it'll even shine conspicuously from city skies because this is still going on. Again, if you just joined us, I'm Bob Berman here for the SLU space camera, and we're looking at a NOVA that has just blown up. It was just discovered yesterday. And the difference between a NOVA and a supernova, well, in a NOVA like this, material is slowly falling on to a little white dwarf star that's an old collapsed star, unbelievably dense, a million times denser than water, until this material from a companion star, a double star, ignites. And it does not destroy the star. In a nova, the star brightens many fold, but the star lives to tell about it afterward. By comparison, let me show you a picture of a supernova. In a supernova explosion, nothing is left of the star. This just blows itself to kingdom come. 
And these are much rarer. We have not had a supernova in our galaxy since the year 1604. That's four centuries. So we're really overdue for that. In fact, when we look at other galaxies, perhaps I'll show you a picture of a, another a galaxy taken by the SLU telescopes. Take a look at this. This is a SLU image, the SLU space camera looking at the Whirlpool galaxy. We just had a supernova here just two years ago blowing up in one of its spiral arms. Hey, isn't this gorgeous? If you want to control the SLU telescopes and see this for yourself, by the way, a little plug here, uh, check out SLU membership where you can make the telescope point uh, anywhere you want, anytime you want. Or you can simply go to the SLU app. The iPad app is free. Just download it and there it is. And uh, then you can use that to look at objects as well. So that's the story behind it. Now let's go back to this live image of the constellation of Delphinus the Dolphin. And there is the supernova, I'm sorry, nova. We just looked at a supernova. This is the nova that's going on as we speak. Uh, very, very exciting. I'm very excited by it because we have not had a naked eye Nova since, uh, well, 2009. We had KT Aridness. That was in November of uh, 2009. That was barely visible to the naked eye, magnitude 5.4. But this one has already exceeded it. We're already plunging beyond that level, and who knows where it will stop. That's what's so exciting. We're not showing you a picture that was taken last week or last month or a Nova that's already happened. This is brightening up hour by hour and nobody knows how bright this is going to get. Right now, it's still relatively faint among the stars. Those of you who know the constellations and can find the Great Summer Triangle, well, that's, that's, that's a way to start if you know the constellations pretty well and know Delphinus and, may, and perhaps even know Sagitta, which is a little arrow-like thing. It's kind of between the two. And if you don't know the night sky, you'll never find it because it's just another faint star among the stars of summer. Uh, you'll really need somebody knowledgeable. But here's a map uh, for all the good it will do most people, a star map. You know, uh, I, I don't know how honest to be here, but the average person uh, does know which way is up, but certainly can't uh, identify more than a few stars in the night sky, and I don't know how useful this map will be. But get hold of your local astronomer friend. We all know people who are into astronomy or call up your local astronomer um, astronomy club and I guarantee there will be people who will know exactly where to look and they can point this out to you but better yet we'll just do it for you here at SLU because we'll be pointing the SLU space camera to this Nova tonight this is the live image it's happening as we're observing it and we're going to probably do this uh, periodically, especially if it brightens up and becomes uh, even more spectacular. We will also be looking at the supernova that's going off in the galaxy M74. In fact, we're working on a supernova series that will come up in a week or two where each night we're going to uh, take you to uh, other galaxies, especially the galaxy M74, and look at this currently blowing up supernova. Now that's a kind of explosion that destroys the entire neighborhood, destroys the star and everything around it. This is not that dramatic, what's happening now. What we're looking at is a brightening that, well, you wouldn't want to be on a planet orbiting this star, um, the supernova, uh, uh, in the constellation of Delphinus that's still brightening, but it's not destroying the little white dwarf star that's going to survive this. So. It, it's uh, very, very cool, and uh, so stay tuned. Now, tomorrow we're going to do a solar show. Perhaps you've heard that the sun's magnetic field is flipping. North is becoming south, south is becoming north. Usually happens every 11 years, but the sun has been weird lately. The last sunspot cycle has been stretched out, strange, and so this solar flip also has been delayed and weird. What does it mean for Earth, and what about Earth's? magnetic pole flips. A lot of people worry about that. Anything to it? We're going to explore that live tomorrow at 1.30 p.m. Tomorrow afternoon, Eastern Time, 1.30 Eastern Time, with a 